My name is Dan Dorfmiller. I'm the author of Print Reading for Construction. I will take a look at material from Unit 6, Specifications and Building Code. In this video, you will learn about the purpose and basic organization of a set of specifications and what is CSI, the Construction Specifications Institute. We will also look at some examples of specifications and a few gotchas to avoid when reviewing construction requirements. Generally defined, specifications are written statements that define the extent of the quality of work and the materials to be used. Specifications supplement the drawings for the construction project and are considered to be a part of the construction documents. Specifications vary in length. They can range from a few pages in a small residential project to a volume of several hundred pages in a large commercial project. So what is CSI? CSI is the Construction Specifications Institute. It is an organization that maintains standards of construction language used in building specifications and documents. CSI has developed a standardized numbering system called Master Format for identifying requirements, products, and activities used in the construction industry. The master format system uses a six-digit numbering system to organize information. The first two numbers represent the top level in the system and identify divisions. The remaining numbers represent additional levels of detail and are used for identifying related areas of information within the division. There are 50 major divisions in all. Note that not all of the division numbers are used. Some divisions are being reserved for future expansion. Division 00, Procurement and Contracting Requirements, is the first and most logical division. Next is Division 1, General Requirements. This division is typically glossed over until there's a problem. Always read these two divisions. Typically, a set of specifications is organized into sections of information. The following sections are common. Related Documents, Summary, related sections, definitions, references, description of work, quality assurance, submittals, special inspections, project conditions, products, execution, protection, maintenance, warranties, cleaning, and repairs. When first reviewing specifications, read the table of contents to become familiar with the type of information included in the project specs. Become familiar with general information, such as insurance, general liability, supervision, submittals, and the many other items that will pertain to all the project divisions. Now, let's take a look at a few gotchas in the typical set of specs. In this example, note the bidder's safety performance requirements and the supporting documentation that must be submitted prior to bidding. Note in this example, that the contractor must carefully examine the site prior to bidding and will not be compensated for conditions that could be determined by examining the site. This might be a gotcha if you don't follow the specifications and find something later. The owner can fall back on this portion of the specification. Note here where the specs refer to a list of other documents and standards that are to be included in the project specification. This list alone is significant amount of additional document information you must know and be responsible for. Here's an example of another gotcha. This example explains cleaning requirements, who is responsible for it, and what happens if you don't perform. In conclusion, first review the table of contents, then skim the entire set of specifications to become familiar with the project. Thank you. Please visit my website for additional videos on print reading for construction at www.printreading.us.